The world is now filled to overflowing with idolatry, idolaters, and every kind of sin and blasphemy and abomination. That's why judgment must come soon. And the warning judgments have already begun. The signs in the heavens and a few watchmen faithful to both discern, see, and to say and declare. And most everyone wants business as usual. Somehow the humanists and civilization will prevail. What the world calls civilization. God calls it abomination. Murders, war, greed, pedophiles, incest, rape, every kind of sin and corruption rampant throughout the earth. In every nation, but especially the nation that claims to be Christian and special. Yeah. Luciferians. High Freemasons, the occult. Moloch. America, Babylon the Great, the great whore. And Roman religion corrupt apostate religion, not just the Muslims, not just the Roman Catholics, not just the Vatican, false hypocrisy religion, lukewarm religion, mega churches, mega money, rap music and rock music in the sanctuary and they call it worship. You are worthy, O oh Lord, to receive worship and honor and glory and power and dominion. You are worthy and you are righteous to send judgment upon the earth, beginning with the worst of the nations that have corrupted this nation and all of the nations. Mm -hmm. Not just pornography, not just Hollywood, the media, the whole Luciferian mindset declaring a false freedom and a false liberty. False! And an abomination to God. Wanting to be free from the moral restrictions and boundaries of Almighty Yahweh. Yehovah Yahweh. Who only wants the best for His people and his creation, but who defines the boundaries, the moral, not just the national, the national or earthly boundaries, the moral boundaries. This do and you'll be blessed. Do not do this, for you will bring a curse upon yourself. Just like a faithful, loving, Hallowed be thy name. We are entering the time of judgment upon the earth, and we will not be here much longer. We're not escapists, Lord, but we want out of this world before you send wrath and judgment and great tribulation. upon this nation, upon all the nations. For the nation
nations are filled with pagans and hypocrites. And a few, I know, Lord, a few you have given the burden and the vision to declare the warning yes. before it all comes down. Right. So help us to be faithful witnesses, which includes being watchmen, with a prophetic message. All the apostles, all the disciples, all those that were witnesses for you in the first century, they had a prophetic, not just a salvation gospel message, they had a prophetic witness and message. In these final hours, and last of the last days, should we not also have that burden, that message? The repent, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, includes God's warning. He will judge this earth, this world, and the nation. All, all the nations. And only Enoch and Noah and his family escape. Sober us up, Lord. My heart is burdened. I thank you for faithful servants and watchmen like Tony Lamb. I thank you, Lord, that you brought it to my attention. First thing when I got up, first thing that I saw. And then you gave us two. You gave us two of his messages. I didn't even know I was going to give two. It all it's it's a vision. It's a de the details are true. It all lines up with Daniel, Revelation, Matthew twenty four, Luke twenty one. It's all there. Ezekiel, Jeremiah fifty fifty one, especially Revelation eighteen. It's all there to be read and seen and understood. It isn't a hundred years from now. It isn't twenty or thirty years from now. That's why you've raised up at least a small remnant that are doing what they can to reach everyone that is lost and walking in darkness. Show us how we can be used, Lord, to be faithful watchmen and witnesses in this hour. I, I feel, Lord, I feel the urgency. I feel it's, it could very well be this year, next year at the latest, that you take your remnant bride home. You know the pressure we're under, Lord. You know what a fight this is. But we walk in victory because of your victory. We will not be cast down. We will not be anxious for anything. We will not be fearful. We will declare the truth of a loving, merciful, gracious God toward the repentant who seek Him. Those who prove that they are in the world but not of the world. But those that are of the world and choose the world shall be here for great tribulation and even the wrath of God. That's your word. Strengthen us, Lord. 
sober us up, and may your words be upon our lips, because this is the time to warn, not just to win, not just to preach as before, to warn! A world wallowing in sin and idolatry and paganism and every abomination beyond what we even could comprehend. We can't we can't we can't imagine how bad it is. We only get glimpses of it. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. You called us out. You're saying to every soul, every soul that belongs to you, you're saying, come out of her, my people. It is time. that 
called me 
that you called us, you called your people. Yes, Lord. If you did not call us, we would remain as the rest of the world in darkness, in foolishness and flesh. I thank you. Yes. Yes, Lord. We owe you everything. Many do not know it. We owe you everything.
agree with this prayer. This is a wonderful prayer song. We need wisdom, we need power, and true love for each other we have had. So many biblical words. So we come before your face, asking for your grace. Bring your people to a state of kingdom life. Restore His church again. Use us, Lord.
honor, power, and dominion.
your name I'll wave. Hallowed be your name. Hallelujah. Yeshua is the name Everlasting blessing and joy and peace and everything good that comes from you. We are in awe of you. I am in awe of you. All that you have done, what you have created and recreated and rebirthed. You have done this. You have called us out of the earth and out of the world. In the earth, but out of the world. May we as a people bless you and worship you and honor you more day by day. Not just once a week only. For this has been lost in the earth. You will restore it by your spirit of people that will seek you and worship you and honor you in spirit and in truth. Not by rote or ritual or mechanical. Worshippers and warriors and witnesses, it is time to raise them upward. As a final witness, before judgment falls in its fullness. You have given visions, visions and dreams to some that seek you with a humble heart. And they are declaring it. I know you have given dreams and visions. And we have to have the discernment to know which is of you and which is just of the imagination or, or human mind.
speak to each one of us about the lateness of the hour and what you're about to do in the earth, what you are doing and what you will do in the earth before your Son returns in glory with all of his armies, angels and saints. Men made perfect in Christ. Worshippers and warriors. And we are to be part of that army. Fearless. Fearing and revering only you. Yehovah, Yehovah. Yeshua. Yehovah, Yehovah. Loving and fearing you. An army. And you are raising up that army, Lord. I know you are. Gideon's little remnant army. Make us and mold us, awaken us, make us and mold us, O Lord. Yes. Thou art the potter, I am the clay, we are the clay. Yes, Lord. Mold us and make us have thine own way. Yes. yes. Thank you, thank you for everything you brought us through, Lord. It was needed and necessary. Even if we have to go through further tribulation, you sustain us and strengthen us. Yes. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name.
power and presence.
The Spirit of God is moving throughout the earth and among God's people to bring forth significant shifts and change. He is sending forth into the earth a sound to open the portals between heaven and earth. This sound of the Lord causes the heavenly realm to move on the earth and it opens the way for those on the earth to move in the heavens. From the earliest of times, God chose the ram's horn or shofar as one of his instruments to release this sound. Awesome things take place when the shofar sounds according to the command of the Lord God Almighty. Walls fall down, enemies are destroyed, the presence of God manifests, and God's people enter into the covenant cycle of blessing God has prepared for them. The shofarot are sounded in three distinct ways. First, they awake and God's people. Sharp staccato blasts by watchmen on the wall sound the alarm approaching danger. In the midst of war, the Teruah orders God's armies to attack the approaching enemies. When we hear the Teruah, a sequence of nine short blasts, we know God is strategically releasing us into our future. The Shofar Road also released a breaking sound in a series of three glass small shavarim. The shavarim signal a breaking down of what resists the Lord and a breaking in of God's power. Breaking down and breaking, breaking in. Purpose. Both are seen in Gideon's victory over the Midianites. The blast of the Shofar Road and the breaking sound of the pots broke down the great Midianite army and allowed God's people to break through in great victory. The third sound of the shofar is a single extended blast called the tekiah. The tekiah sound establishes the presence and enemies of God in the earth and orders his people in his perfect time. When the tekiah is lengthened to a great tekiah, it firmly and finally establishes God's sovereign purpose and rule over the person, foe, or territory over which it is blown. Almighty God, release your sound in us, your people, through the blasts of the shore. Establish us in your cycle of redemption and restoration. Holy Spirit, minister to us with the shofar rope in our current place and season. Let the sounds of victory, refreshment, alertness, battle, and throne move in our soul and surroundings to position us for the days that lie ahead. El Shaddai, Lord God, Lord, overcome our enemies and release over us the sound of your great victory. By your sovereign right hand, establish your rule over us and over our territory. Let your kingdom come. The will come out from the stump of Jesus. From his roots, the branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on you. The spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his will, and faithfulness the sash around his waist. In that day you will say, I will praise you, O Lord. Although you were angry with me, your anger has turned away. You have comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. In that day you will say, Give thanks to the Lord, call on His name, make known among the nations what He has done, and proclaim that His name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for He has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion. For great we declare Zion. the victory of the shofar over Cebu and Sonola. Yes. It's a holy song. We have nothing more important to do. 
wonderful, oh, wonderful is your grace. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For He is our Father, our Lord, our Redeemer, and we
by your spirit, O Lord, and abiding in your word. That is true liberty. Jehovah Shalom. You are our peace. The liberty to know what is yes and what is no. From your throne. Oh, Jesus, that is true liberty. The liberty of yes, yes, you are. And the liberty of no, what not to do or say or be. Bring us into the full liberty of your kingdom, O Lord. True liberty. Knowledge of the Holy One. The fear of the Holy One is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Blessed be the name of Hashem, Yahovah, Yahovah. Yah, You are infinite, Lord, for those who can receive and will receive. Yeah. Lord, we look around see the results of Adam's race that you called us out of. You, when you called us out of the, of the harlot and out of the world, you called us out of Adam's sin and race. This is a world that has betrayed you and blasphemed you and dishonored you over and over again beginning with Eve, and then Adam, and then Cain, and all the rest. They have wronged you, they have betrayed you, they have dishonored you, and you will send judgment. Everyone will reap what they have sown, even the nation. Only those that prepare their heart and mind will escape your bride, your holy bride, a holy people that you have made holy because they surrender all and they mean it. They don't just sing the chorus, they surrender all and they prove it. All to thee, my precious Savior, I surrender all. Even in grief, even in loss, even in pain, whether in health or not in health, to surrender all because you surrendered all. When you came down from the throne, when you went through the wilderness, when you walked the walk to Calvary, when you were spat upon and mocked and betrayed, you surrendered all. mindful of that. And may we be found worthy to escape, to be taken up. I'm praying this for myself, for us, for your remnant. I'm praying this for my heart, Lord, that we may be counted worthy, that we may walk worthy, 
to be taken up. There will be a remnant, there will be a people that will escape the judgments and the wrath of God, even great tribulation. In this world you will have tribulation, but be of good encouragement, be of good cheer. Remember, remember, Jesus said, I have overcome the world for you. Yes. And we are overcomers because of that one fact above all else. Yes. Then, then, then I surrender all. Thank you, Lord, for surrendered vessels here. Perfect that which you have started. Complete that which you have begun in our lives. I don't even know how to end this, Lord. Hmm. This time together, this, this worship time, our prayers are seeking you. I'm just so thankful that your Holy Spirit is here to minister. Yes. Yes. And to help us pour out our heart before yes. you. Yes. Sir. You honor that. I know that you honor that above all else. Yes. Men and women that pour out their heart yes. before you. Yes. Yes. Exposing our need. For we are needy people. Yes. Yes. Not just our desires. We know we're needy people. And that you have all the power and all the answers. May we be counted worthy to escape that which shall shortly be coming upon the earth. We trust you for divine protection and provision and guidance and enabling to be overcomers. For without you, we are overcome. But with you, we are more than conquerors. This is what I have found, O Lord. Because you made the way. You reached out to me and to us. You revealed your salvation. You revealed who your son is. Increase our faith so that we can work miracles. For you have said, Lord, that greater things shall you do. For I go to the Father. That's the second Pentecost. They did greater things. They did, not just Paul, they did great and miraculous works in the earth until Rome took over. Until Rome. And Paul warned of what would happen. And you said, Lord, you'd restore Pentecost power, latter day reign not a movement of men, but of your spirit, empowered to do greater works, Jesus. miraculous works, Jesus. power in our words, to save, to heal, and deliver. And we haven't seen that, Lord. I know that as, as a body, as a people, we have not seen that in its fullness since the first century. Only glimpses of it. Pray with me.
Pray with me on this for, for, for a moment. Pray with me. Restore that power, Lord. Restore. Restore that anointing. Yes. Restore. For thy name's sake. We don't deserve it. We don't earn it. It's for your name's sake. Yes. For your kingdom's sake. Yes. Restore great power as in the day of Pentecost. Yes. Oh, I feel, I feel it. He's going to do it. We're, we're near. We're near. We haven't broken through yet. But Lord, I'm asking you to break through to an open heaven where your vessels here, your people that you have called, that are willing to pay the price, willing to pay the price for an open heaven and a restoration of Pentecostal power by the dunamis of God, Yahweh. Ruach HaKodesh. Ruach HaKodesh. Everything is by the anointing of your spirit. Everything that has the stamp of eternity. Everything that is supernatural. And the demons flee screaming in seven different directions. At the mention of thy name. By the power of your name mm. in the word. In the power of worship. Mm. Worship in spirit and truth. Restore, restore, O oh Lord. The beauty of holiness that comes through worship. And hearts that are poured out before you. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord has a temple and a body upon the earth. Not made by human hands. All the way down to the DNA and the atoms and the Spirit. The Lord has a holy temple with living stone, with new names. And they honor your name Holy is the Lord God, Jehovah. Jehovah, Yahavah, Ava, Hama, Yahavah, Hamashiach. Yahoshua, Hamashiach. Yeshua Ha'adam. Ha'amayahava. Ha'amushiach. Hallowed be thy name. And a book of remembrance was written. For they thought upon and they meditated upon your name and honored your name, even as they honor your word. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as one heaven and earth. You will purge and destroy everything of darkness and chaos and evil in the second heaven, in the first heaven, on earth and beneath the earth. 
you will send all the darkness to Hades and the lake of fire. Hallowed be thy name. For the agents of death and deception and sin would turn heaven into hell. The vessels and agents of sin and darkness would turn heaven into hell. Hallowed be thy name that you will send them to the lake of fire. But the sheep and the redeemed of the Lord you will gather into the heavenly kingdom. Mm -hmm. You will restore and you will receive the glory that is due your name, my Lord. Thank you. I'm just speaking what I know from your word, what is in my heart. You will gather together. Harpasio, a great gathering, a catching away, a rescuing of your people even those whose bodies are planted in the earth. Even those who are here in the earth. In this hour, you call us here for an hour such as this. Please help us to be faithful, Lord, more faithful than before us. As we know, we know, we see the apostasy, we see the lukewarmness. We see many things that are disturbing and vexing, but our eyes are upon thee. Amen. Our hope and our salvation is in thee. And when we pray it would be this year, we pray it would be soon. When we say Maranatha, we mean any time, any moment, or Spirit and the bride say come. <clears throat> Deliver all your people from the darkness of paganism, idolatry, false religion, all the seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. Deliver your people, Lord. That's our prayer. Before it's too late.
and bring glory to your name. For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. Praise the name of Jesus. last days, Lord God. Yes, I just want to thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity and for this privilege, Lord God. Even, Lord, we just want to thank you, Lord, for you are in yes. our midst, by the Holy Spirit, Lord God. Salamat o Dios, kaya mo nakita, amahan, na ikaw na kayo na hinihita na, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amo ginaulit ka ni mga mga patalang kasilungog himaya pinaagi sa inyong buktog anak ka si Christ Jesus. Amen. O, amen. 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 Ah.
Blessed and most merciful Heavenly Father, I come before you humbly, Lord, and I, I pray and I beg that you give me the courage, the will, the wisdom, the words to speak, that you put in my heart to speak. I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I am nothing but the dust of the earth, and no one is beneath me. The only thing special about me is that I am forgiven, and I am God's dirt. I have to tell you that I love America, my home, the place of my birth. I served in the military for my country, but I do not really like or care for what has become of my country. I am not a prophet. I am just a lowly watchman with dreams and visions. But these dreams and visions have given me glimpses into the future, and I was commanded to warn you. I feel rather like Jeremiah. Jeremiah was commanded to warn the people, God's chosen people, that destruction was to soon fall upon the Jews, and that the Jews, they knew they were God's chosen people. And their logic was that God loved, loved them so much that they, they knew they were God's chosen people. We are a special people set aside, and therefore God will not destroy us, his chosen people. After all, God freed them from bondage in Egypt, God parted the Red Sea for them. God fed them manna from heaven in the desert. They knew, they knew they were God's chosen people. And so their logic was that God would not harm them, his chosen people. They thought wrong. Yes, God is a kind, loving, merciful God. But the same God is also a jealous God who will, who will unleash full fury, full wrath upon those who embellish idols above him those who would sacrifice babies to false gods and those who would turn away from God and embrace and embellish sin in spite of God's warnings. God always warns before he brings judgment. I give you the signs in the heavens, the American eclipse, and there's a second American eclipse coming in 2024. I give you the blood moons, the Revelation 12 sign in the heaven, a once in history event, and there have been other signs. Amos 3 and 7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth the secret unto his servants, the prophets. I, I do not claim to be a prophet, and there are those who are now, who, who now claim they are, and they're crying out from the wilderness to be heard, and their warning is going out. But there are few who heed the warning. Our time is short, very short. The rapture of the faithful will soon come. Several years ago, I, I got a dream, and it, in that dream I was in a huge fancy movie theater all alone. I went down and I sat in the front row. Then the lights went down very low, and there was a large curtain that was covering the screen, and then the curtain was slowly pulled back, revealing a, a very large movie screen. I looked around, and I was the only one in the theater, and I thought that very strange in this huge fancy movie theater all alone and on top of that I was in the front row and that was something else that was very strange because I, I'd never sat in the front row but there I was the movie started to play and then I realized something else that was a little peculiar and that there was no movie title there was no listing of the, the stars uh, there was nothing no, no opening credits the film just started to play what I saw in this film I saw the destruction from many different scenarios, from many different ways. For many years, I thought this was to hide the real thing that would destroy America. But after years of praying on this and insight from the Holy Spirit, I have now to come to realize that it's not one or two things that will destroy America, but it is all of these judgments that are coming to America. I saw money blowing down the street. No one, no one bothered to pick it up because it was worthless paper. I saw Americans shooting and bombing other Americans. I saw people who looked disheveled, unkept, with bugs and sores all over their bodies. I saw people starving and eating grass, leaves, bugs, worms, anything they could eat as they were starving. I saw people eating other people. I saw all this and much, much more. Then I zoomed up high above America and I saw foreign armies in America. I saw nuclear weapons going off in American cities. I saw what looked like an EMP weapon going off high above America. 
and then America was forced into total darkness. I saw so much more. I do not know the order of these events. I just know that this is coming to America. And if you want to miss this judgment, then I suggest you get to know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, as he is the only one who can save you, me, or anyone from what is coming soon to America. This is what I saw, and this is in no particular order. But I know this is coming to America, this and much more. What I have to tell you may shock you, but I only tell you the truth, out of love. Economic collapse is coming. Ezekiel 7 and 19. They shall cast their silver into the streets, and their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because, because it is a stumbling block of their iniquity. Civil war is coming to America. War is coming to America. I saw foreign troops on American soil. I saw nuclear weapons detonated over major American cities. I saw earthquakes coming to America unlike the earth has ever seen before. Luke 21 and 11. And great earthquakes shall there be in diverse places, and famines, and pestilence, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. Tsunamis are coming to the east coast and the west coast. Volcanoes are also coming to America, multiple and massive volcanoes. Famine is coming to America. Have you noticed the food prices lately? They're going up and they'll just keep going up until there's no more food. Then what will you eat? I saw an EMP strike on America and the power went out nationwide and, and it did not come back on. Isaiah 47 and verse 5. Set thou silent and get thee into darkness. O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called the Lady of Kingdoms. I saw two asteroid strikes, one in the Atlantic and the other, I think, over western Canada. Revelation 8, 8 and 10. And the second angel sounded, and there was a great mountain burning with fire and cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. Verse 10. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. Pestilence and disease is coming to America, some of it man-made, some of it not. There will be so much more. These are only the top ten big ones that America will have to deal with. These events are all gearing up to take place very soon. Everything is falling into place right now as I speak. Jeremiah 50 and 23. How is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? How has Babylon become a desolation among the nations? Right now, it's like watching the clock tick down to an execution. Unless, unless you are covered and under the precious blood of Jesus Christ, you will suffer. And I'm sorry to say, but most will die. The same God that judged Israel, his chosen people, so harsh, is about to judge America tenfold. If Israel was God's chosen people, then what chance do we have of escaping judgment? None. I later thought about that tenfold part of the message that I had gotten from the Holy Spirit, and I prayed on that, and it was revealed to me that in my movie theater dream, I had witnessed the destruction of America in ten major ways. You say that was just a coincidence, but remember, there are no coincidences when it comes to God. Then I realized that it was ten judgments that were coming to America just like the ten plagues that came upon Egypt. But our ten judgments would be much worse, much worse than what Egypt suffered. This is only part of the wrath of God to be poured out upon America. Ezekiel 39 and 8. Behold, it is come, and it is done, saith the Lord God. This is the day whereof I have spoken. I have a message to give you from the Holy Spirit. I give you this message out of love, with all humility and with all respect. This message is not my words, but the words of the Holy Spirit, and that message is, get your house in order. Time is short. You have been warned. I have no secret information about the rapture. I am not a date setter. I am only telling you what I was told. I pray and I am watching the signs. I am watching for that great catching away, the rapture of God's faithful off this earth. For those who are not raptured, and many of those will be lukewarm Christians or false Christians, I am truly sorry for you because you will enter the tribulation. With all its death and destruction, you will see demons unleashed in vast numbers until everyone seems to be demon-possessed. 
You will see the return of the Nephilim. You will witness fallen angels unleash devastation upon the earth, unlike anything ever seen before, and no weapon will harm them. But the sad thing is, you do not have to endure all of these things, only if you humble yourself and repent of sin. Welcome Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior now, before it is too late. It's time for Christians the earth over to pick up their cross and follow Jesus. I was given a command by the Holy Spirit, and that command was to wake up and tell the people. And that is what I have been attempting to do in every possible way. I do not know what more I can do. I wish that everyone could have seen what I have seen. Then you would believe. I have prayed. I have cried my heart out in prayer for the lost. I've gone on radio. I've, I've wrote books. I've pleaded with people that time is short and to get into the saving grace of Jesus Christ. All I can do now is beg you to please, please, please open your eyes to what is coming and get into the saving grace of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. I pray for all of those that request prayers. I pray for the lost that they open their eyes and see what is coming, that you pray, repent of your sins and welcome Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior. This book, the King James Bible, is the true inspired word of God. Please read this book. It is not a fairy tale or made up by someone's imagination, but rather it is the true inspired word of Almighty God, who loves you so very much, more than you could ever know. And it's God's will that none should perish, but all should have everlasting life in paradise with him and the holy angels. As hard as it is for me to get on my knees, I get on my knees. And I pray for you, your family, your loved ones, all of the lost everywhere, that they should all come to know the lateness of the hour and realize what is coming upon this earth very soon. And that all should come to the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And that all of them would humble themselves before Al Almighty God and repent of sin and invite Jesus into their heart as their Lord and Savior. I have a heads up for you. If you live in Texas and attend an Assembly of God Church, please tell your pastor to be looking for a very important letter coming from me. And that is just another reason why I carry my Bible everywhere I go. A couple of days ago, I carried my Bible into jury duty. I also remember to say the blessing over every meal you eat. Keep this in mind that these are the last days and what we say and what we do is more important than you could ever imagine. This is my King James Bible. I take it everywhere I go. I take it out to eat. I take it to jury duty. I take it into stores, take it shopping, and I say the blessing over every meal, and I pray you do likewise. The name of the Most High God, Yahuwah. Yehovah El Elyon, Yehovah Hakodesh, Hakodosh, Yehovah Hakodesh, Yehovah Shalom, Yehovah Rapha. Yehovah Nishi, Yehovah Nishi, Lord God of Armies, Yehovah Sidkenu, Sidkenu, our righteousness, Yehovah Shama, the God who is always there, the ever present one. Yehovah El Shaddai, El Shaddai, the All-Sufficient One. Yehovah Makodesh, Yehovah Makodesh, He is the One who sanctifies. Yehovah Yahavah. Yehovah, Yahavah, 
the Father, the Eternal Father of Divine Love, Ava, Yahava. Yeshua, Yahshua, Yahushua, Yahushua, Ben Yehovah, Yahushua, Ben Yehovah. Ben Elohim, Ben Adama, Ben Elohim, Ben Adama, the second Adam, Yahoshua, Yahosha, Yahoshua, Ha'adon, the Lord. Hamashiach, the Messiah, the Messiah, Hamashiach, the Messiah, the Messiah. Yahoshua, Yehovah Savaoth, Savaoth, Lord God of hosts, God of armies, of angels and men made perfect, Yehovah Savaoth. Lord God of hosts and armies of angels and men made perfect, made perfect. Hallowed be thy name. Hashem Adama, Hadama, Noah, Avraham. Sarah, Zion, Mount Moriah, Moriah, Yaakov, Yahisrael, Yahisrael. Yerushalem, Yerushalayim, Yerushalem, Yad Yam Kippur, Yam Kippur. Rosh Hashanah, Hashanah, Yod He Vav He, Yah Ava, Yah Ava, Hava. The Father, eternal love. The Father of eternal love. Jehovah Rohai, he is our shepherd. Yahuwah, Yahuwah. Yahovah, Yahavah, Yahovah, Yahavah, Hava, Ava, 
Heya Hava. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Baru Hashem. Yehovah Yahavah. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. In earth, on earth, and throughout all the earth, even as it is perfectly in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Blessed and most merciful Heavenly Father, I come before you and ask that your blessing and this message that you put on my heart to give, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to read a couple of scriptures. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 3. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh not upon them. On September 21st, the UN's new motto was changed, and now it is peace and safety. Something to ponder. Also, Ezekiel 39 and 8. Behold, it is come, and it is done, saith the Lord God, the day whereof I have spoken. I am the dust of the earth, I am nothing, I am nobody, but I am God's dirt, and I will do as God commands me to do. Through a series of dreams, visions, inspirations, and the Holy Spirit revealing things to me, over several years I've been, I've, I've been a picture has been painted, and I believe altogether what it means is that is that God has showed me the future, and I have been shown and, and told many things in my dreams and visions, and I have held my tongue, but the Holy Spirit commands me to now speak. You have been given signs, but you did not heed the warnings. The four blood moons, all on Jewish feast days, were a sign. The eclipse, the sign of Jonah. And the Revelation 12 sign in heaven, all signs from God. Now, before it's too late, you need to repent of your sins. You need to humble yourself before God, and you need to repent. The time grows short. Now, please believe me, this is not from me. This is what I was shown. Men shall go mad and do unspeakable things. This has now been unfolding, and it now manifests and intensifies. Satan, fallen angels, demons will all be in them unleashed upon the earth, and they will take over men and women, making them do unspeakable things. They will destroy much of mankind. We will literally be at war with these entities, and the news will call it a war with aliens. There will be no place to hide from these entities. They will find you. Animals will turn on mankind. Nature itself will turn on mankind. Storms will intensify. Clouds will boil. The seas will roar. The earth will move out of its place and shall reel to and fro. The seasons will seem to be confused. The sun will become deadly, causing burns, cancers, cataracts. It will become so rampant upon people everywhere. Soon the sun will start killing people. The sun will burn up trees, grass, crops, and men, killing many and adding to the famine. There shall be huge fissures open up in the earth, some running dozens of miles long, and some will spread yards and yards wide open for no apparent reason. And this has already started to happen around the earth. 
Oceans will withdraw from some areas and some coasts and will pile up water in other areas for seemingly no known reason. And this has also started to happen on the Earth. War is coming and soon we will have a stock market collapse. The economy will totally collapse. The dollar will go to zero. Then what will your gold and your silver be worth? We will be hit by two asteroids and they will cause massive tsunamis and total de devastation to our coasts. America will have a series of major earthquakes, the likes of which the world has never seen. The west coast will be shaken terribly and that will cause a tsunami in the, in the Pacific. These earthquakes will trigger other earthquakes and volcanoes. Also the whole earth will be shaken violently. The center of the country will be shaken terribly as well. Most of the buildings, especially the tall buildings, will for the most part fall down on, on the west and in the central parts of America. The east coast and the west coast will be inundated with tsunami water and the water will recede slowly. There will be several large volcanoes that will blow at the same time. As for the a super volcano, yes, I saw Yellowstone blow and it will devastate America. America will be hit by an EMP weapon. I don't know how a win, but it's but it's coming. Men and women will hide themselves in fancy and expensive underground bunkers with food and water, but it will not save them. And men will run to and fro mad doing unspeakable things. Cannibalism will become commonplace, along with killing for no reason whatsoever except to kill. I know this because God has showed it all to me. I do not know the sequence of these events or when these events will take place. I just know they're coming. Any one major catastrophe could bring down America, but when you have a perfect storm like what's coming, America will not survive, not in its present form. Basically, the plagues of Egypt will be unleashed upon America. The time of sorrows has already started. Next comes the rapture. And then the tribulation starts. From now on, it is it will be one calamity after another, and each one getting worse and worse, and coming faster and faster until there is seemingly no break between catastrophes as time progresses. Even now, America is divided and is about ready to go into a civil war, and that too shall come to pass. The Bible says that one third of the earth will be destroyed. It just so happens that North America and South America equate to about one-third of the world's surface. Is that just coincidence? I don't think so. There are no coincidences when it comes to God. Calamity, calamity will touch every people, every nation, and every land. So to put it, so that no part of the earth will be untouched. But the focus of all my dreams and visions was America, because America has sinned the most, and has drugged or forced other nations into her abominations. So America is the focus of God's wrath. And for the survivors, sores, disease, pestilence, famine, living like animals, filthy and a meager existence, eating things that would be considered unthinkable or inedible. God's hand of protection will be removed from the land, and at the same time, Satan will take over and rule the earth. And if you did not like it here before, stick around because it's going to get real, real bad under Satan's rule. And this is not even hell yet. Is there any good news here? Yes, there is. And here it is. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 9. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is our salvation. Call on him. Humble yourself before Jesus. Repent and go and sin no more. God did not make hell for humans. He made hell for the fallen angels and for Satan. But for those who refuse God's plan of salvation, hell awaits. I, I beg you all, if you're, if you're not saved, 
and in the will and grace of Jesus. I invite you, I beg you, to humble yourself before God and repent of your sins. Because the earth is going to be no place for anyone after the rapture. I pray for your all. I pray that God keep you in his grace. Thank you. And amen.